Alright, I have a CD here that's not a game, but a few small games and other programs. All Christmas themed, of course. This was released in the mid-90s, so we'll take a look at it on my Windows 98 virtual machine. I don't know if software packages like this are really a thing anymore. I mean, so much stuff these days are downloaded over the internet, and optical discs have sort of fallen out of fashion. So I'd be surprised if I saw something like this in late 2019. But you run the setup executable, and it installs everything at once, and gives you access to a folder with all the shortcuts you need. So we'll take a look at all these programs, I suppose. First up is Word Detect, which is one of those word-finding things you might find in an activity book, but apparently it isn't enough that you open the game. You'll click the letters on the board immediately if you find something, or see if those boxes on the left that look like checkboxes are interactive, until you find out that you have to hit the play button before the game officially starts. I don't know why, because if this thing scores you on how quickly you can find all the words in a puzzle, then you can cheat and find them all before starting the timer. I don't know if it does actually have a timer or not to see how fast or slow you are. Like, if you wanted to put your name into a scoreboard after completing a puzzle to see who has the quickest times. I was going to play a full-length game and take a screenshot to see if it displayed anything like that. But it crashed when I was like 90% of the way done and I'm not going through all this again. Still, it's fine for what it is. And there's all the results that I was too lazy to search for on my own. Oh well. Second game, Santa's Workshop. This is one of the more elaborate activities on this disc. Your main menu screen looks like a Christmas card where you can click a few different things to start the game, open an options window, or look at the high scores. Alright, let's go. I don't know why this can't be maximized, or at least have the window border be up against the top of the screen. Oh, well, whatever. The game already started and the elves are talking. Yeah, I messed up already. Uh, I know it's not the game's fault since it's relatively straightforward, but I just can't focus on controlling two entities at the same time very easily. And I just realized the music isn't playing. It worked earlier, though. Uh-oh, it's That's weird. Oh, crap. And every time I start a new game, I have to reset the window position, too, because I'm OCD, I guess. Where did everything go, by the way? Oh, there it is. Well, I figured out what my music problem is. Apparently, even though I stuck the CD into my CD tray, I forgot to tell the virtual machine to use that disk drive and give Windows 98 access to it. So, these games will actually start without access to the disk, just without the music too, if need be. Okay, now I'm going to preemptively move the game window to the top of the screen, since that irritates me so much. And we'll see if the music works properly now. Yep, there it is. That music sounds so PC 90s. Alright, here we go. Oh, the game window still moved itself down. Oh, whatever. I'm not the best at these kinds of games, but basically you map two keys on the keyboard to move the elf on the left up and down, another two keys to move the elf on the right up and down, and the fifth key to make the elf on the right throw the object he's holding into the furnace, trash can, Santa sleigh, or at the bottom conveyor belt, depending on where he's standing. The elf on the left passes objects along automatically seems like his job is rather pointless since he's filling a gap that only one more conveyor belt would fill in each row. Toggling the music apparently broke it again. Not sure why it's being so finicky when I decided to record it just this once. Actually, toggling the music option sometimes gives me a brief bit of MIDI noise leftovers. And look at that! Two objects at once, I can't catch both of them. Also, are we throwing all the coal into the furnace? How come some of that isn't going into the sled, too? 
I thought that was part of the deal when we made Santa the okay. Arbiter of Morality. And I don't mind when the elves talk, but sometimes they just repeat themselves. Perky. Uh-oh, it's broken. Perky. Perky. Whoa! I swear, sometimes the elf makes it in front of the conveyor belt just barely in Oops, time to catch the object, but it still falls on the floor anyways. I guess once it starts falling, the elf can't catch it at the last second. Also, sometimes I feel like even though I press a key, the elf doesn't move, so the controls have a stiff feel to them, unfortunately. Why can't I throw a broken toy into the furnace, too? We're already burning coal, it's not like burning a plastic toy is going to hurt the environment too much more. Also, why would it matter if I let something that's already broken drop on the floor? It's just going into the trash anyway, so that should hardly count against you. Okay, I finished day one. The top of the game window says that this was December 1st, so there should probably be 24 levels total in this game, since I doubt you would be working on Christmas Day. I'm not going through all that, but I guess I will do level 2 before calling it quits. And I still can't get the music to work. Whoa. Look how pissed Santa is. Whoa. Oh god, he's now he's really upset. If I just drop one more... Whoa. Oh, whoa, indeed. That's actually kind of scary. I'm getting out of here. Okay, third game is Christmas Kai. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce that word, but that's what I'm going with. So I open this up and initially I have no clue what I'm doing, although it's not hard to figure out. You basically use the arrow keys and you pretty quickly get a sense of what you can and can't push around with your circular green body. There's a lot of trial and error and random sound effects. The goal is to collect all the presents and that involves some puzzle solving since there's blue arrows that fly in whatever direction they're pointing redirectional arrows so that the aforementioned blue arrows can fly around on a loop or be piled in some corner or whatever. A bulldozer that can push other blocks around, etc. Great, I got the present. And then level 2 starts and you're stuck until a timer counts down the slowest seconds in history. While all these blue arrows start circulating around like wind, you push one magnet out of the way while the magnet on the opposite side follows you, and you have to move your whole body out of the center before you can go back in and get the presents. But I'm not going to go over every little detailed mechanic here. Just a few random highlights. Such as when I tried getting some presents out of a corner, but the wind blocks piled up on top of me. And I trapped one of the presents in that corner as a result, while also seemingly messing up the airflow as well. Fortunately, the game lets you reset and try again as many times as you want. One thing I've noticed is that the game speeds up when you hold down one of the arrow keys to move, which makes things a bit confusing and gives you the illusion that you're able to outrun something. That's what I tried to do, but I ended up pushing the obstacle in front of the present myself. That was brilliant. Okay, basically you gotta navigate through these magnets now, but you can't push two at a time, so you gotta shuffle them a bit. Well, that's nice. I spent about a quarter of an hour playing the first five levels, and at this point I basically got stuck and couldn't figure out what to do anymore. But since it's the season of giving, I should point out that according to a site I found, which I'll link below in the description, that Kai was a charity share where you had to donate to save the children in order to register and get a lot more levels. Cool stuff. Number four is some kind of control panel. I just realized that these shortcuts aren't even listed alphabetically. Now, uh, whatever. I don't think any of the rest of these are going to be nearly as long or in-depth as Santa's Workshop or Christmas Kai. Anyways, if you wanted to have Christmas songs composed in MIDI playing in the background as you worked on your computer, this is where you can organize your playlists. In retrospect, I could have had this playing during the last couple of games. Oh well. Or not. This doesn't seem to be working either. Although to be fair, I don't think this virtual machine software was primarily intended for use with games or multimedia programs anyways. Now then, number five is just a list of templates you can use to make a nice letter with a Christmas-themed illustration. I guess you'd just type whatever message you wanted to deliver and print it out. I think my grandpa may have used this program or a similar one because I'd get Christmas-themed mail with drawn pictures and designs like this from him on occasion. 
Or I guess you can email it and have some kind of simple animation play. Maybe? I'm not sure what all those instructions were exactly. So what's behind shortcut number six? More stuff to print out, various activities for kids. Okay, I opened this connect the dots picture in MS Paint. Uh, yeah, good enough. Number seven provides some Christmas-themed wallpapers for your Windows desktop, which is pretty self-explanatory. Too bad the text for each icon still has an ugly blue-green box around it. There might be a way to fix that, but I don't feel like figuring it out, even though I said I was OCD earlier. It's like my brain can't decide if it wants to be OCD or lazy. But number eight gives you a Christmas-themed icons, just in case you wanted to make visually looking at a shortcut for a program less intuitive. So, why not a red and green calculator or a paint bucket with a candy cane sticking out? I mean, that... They look cute and all, don't get me wrong, but I don't know about actually using this. It also comes with little MIDI sound files that you can set to play every time you open an application. But I can't get those to work either. I don't know what's wrong with this virtual machine. Alright, passing the halfway point now at number 9 is a Microsoft Bob clone. Well, at least the music works on this one, but yeah, if you ever wanted to replace your entire desktop, start menu, etc. with a Christmas decorated living room where you have no idea where anything is until you accidentally move your mouse overhead, then here you go. Oh, I remember this. Uh, well, I take that back. I think it only gives you access to all these other Christmas programs. So it's not really a Microsoft Bob clone. I don't know, it, again, it's cute, I guess, but I'd never remember where everything is. What, now this program works? Just because I opened it through this Christmas desktop portal thing? Number 10 is just a menu for five other programs that are considered games. I guess this is easier to open through the aforementioned Christmas desktop than scattering five different things throughout that virtual living room that you would have to click. Number 11 is the help wizard, which less than 1% of people probably ever read anyways. And why does it scroll so far down when there's nothing there? It's like someone rested their elbow on the enter key for five seconds without realizing it. Number 12 is one of those about windows that gives you information about the software. Now how is this release number 6 if it's copyright 1992 through 1996? Did they release two versions during one of those years? Number 13 is the actual Continuous Carols program. It doesn't open anything, you just double click it to toggle it on and off. I just love how individual instruments in MIDI songs need to finish whatever note they're playing before they fall silent. Number 14, Christmas Tiles. This one nearly crapped out on me, but fortunately they designed these games so that they aren't totally reliant on audio in order to function. It doesn't matter anyway, since you could use the Continuous Carols program in the background if you really wanted to. And as you can see, it's one of those tile-matching memory games. I'm sort of okay at this kind of thing, and the artwork is not only nice, it's animated. Unfortunately, if you're trying to get the quickest time possible, you can't click any other tiles until the animation finishes playing. Come on, I've got only two tiles, there we go. That's weird, the high score box lets you type in a quote? Um... Uh... Okay, there we go. It's a cute looking game overall. Number 15 is Christmas Puzzles, and this was kind of broken for me. Yeah, that's what some of them look like, so they're impossible to work with. As a reminder, though, I think this virtual machine just doesn't want to play nice with some of these programs. But in the meantime, how are you going to remember which pieces go where when it's corrupted that badly? And I honestly tried to solve this because I thought, well, maybe only the preview for the picture loaded improperly. But no, that's just how it is for me. But I only said that's what some of them look like. Others look just fine. 
I found out that this game has some of the same images twice, one in JPEG format and the other in a bitmap format. The JPEG pictures are all messed up, but the bitmap versions load just fine for me. Also, some pictures appear in both formats and others only show up as one file type or another. I'm not really sure what the point of that is. Good thing I figured that out so I could play this for a bit, but it's really unfortunate that that's a problem. I know this Windows 98 virtual machine isn't perfect or anything, and I want to be fair and point out that I tried this on a physical Windows 98 machine and the JPEG images worked fine there, but Internet Explorer 5 was able to render a JPEG in the virtual machine for God's sake. But other than all that, it's a typical unscramble the puzzle game, and I finally got some music playing with the continuous carols program running in the background. Somehow with only nine pieces, it still takes me a while to do this. But I can tell you one thing, I shouldn't need half an hour to complete it! Maybe if I were using a JPEG I might, but even then I'd eventually figure it out through trial and error after a minute. Because if you put the pieces in the right location, it automatically locks into place and plays that Windows ding sound effect. I'm bad with pieces that just have a tiny bit of something on the edge and the rest is a solid background of color. I don't know. Uh, other than the JPEG issue, it's alright. Nearly there, though. Great, 48 seconds. Oh, what the... It broke my bitmap functionality now? Uh, oh, okay, well, not permanently, but... When I won, that's the reward I got. It sent my completed puzzle through the paper shredder. Number 16, and the last program on the disc, is the gift card creator. Yeah, I know, I left the music playing. I don't even care. But I don't have a floppy disk drive for the virtual machine, so I can't really do anything here. Except let the MIDI music glitch itself out. I really have mixed feelings about MIDI sometimes, but my real Windows 98 machine has a floppy disk drive, so I'll see what I can do there. I have a green one that I might as well use. It complements the red CD quite nicely in my opinion. Uh, too bad the metal shutter is warped a bit. It might get stuck in the disk drive. Well, it got stuck in the disk drive, although I did get it out after a minute of tugging the disk and wedging a bent paperclip into the drive slot, but after all that and confirming that this Christmas card program works normally, I realized that, oh yeah, this virtual machine supports virtual floppy disks, and I don't remember how I got that to work, but here you go. You make a thing, and then you can save it on a floppy and send it to someone. I don't know why it needs to install, rather than simply being read directly from the disk, but yeah. Oh yeah, that happens if you move the mouse. So it's kinda like a screensaver. What I wish I had done differently was try different settings to get Santa to scroll across the screen faster. But that's about it. Pretty cool stuff. Now, one more thing about the CD. It's one of those multi-track discs where all the game and program data is in track 1, but all 20 subsequent tracks are just audio. So you could play tracks 2 through 21 in a stereo system if you wanted to. The minigame CDs throughout history have been made this way before, but what's weird about this is that all this music is still just MIDI compositions encoded into an audio CD format. I'm sure it was easier and cheaper to not have an actual band with real instruments and singers and all that, so I can't really fault them for this, but... On the other hand, how many people are going to want to listen to Christmas music in a MIDI format outside of a few Christmas-themed Windows applications? Oh well, I think that's about all I have to say about this. Uh, pretty... pretty interesting overall. Uh, yeah, so Merry Christmas and other holidays. And I hope I'm more active in 2020. This should be my New Year's resolution, by the way. Because I gotta finish that Harry Potter stuff. <laughs>